All right, guys. Uh, this is the beginning of a video that you won't see for a while. Sorry I'm out of breath that you've been hurrying a little. Started this tractor up today. Uh, was going to move that tractor out with it. Take it to the other barn to part out. And uh, it was sitting right here. 216 was where it is. I pulled it up here. Moved stuff around. And in less than a minute it leaked out this and sprayed all that out the front. It did slow down and stop a little bit, but it's still dripping. I used it to drag that out, and then I parked it here. I'm not sure where all the oil came from, or what the deal is. But it still has oil in it. So this is, as you guys already know, going to be an engine swap video. I picked this 1980 317 up as an engine donor. He said he used it to plow and it blew a hydraulic line, but motor ran good. So I'm gonna switch the engine from this tractor to mine. And then this tractor will be for sale. It has the same KT17 Kohler in it, a little bit dirtier. I'll pull it out and clean it up and make it run and this is going to go in that tractor on today's video so let's get right into it for you guys it'll only be a couple seconds but uh there's snow on the ground right now i got other projects i'm working on so for me i don't know how long it'll be um today is the wednesday after christmas 2022 so uh let's see how long it takes me all right today is the third day of 2023 I uh, got the donor 317 running today so I just brought this over here see the tires are still wet and uh, still a little bit of a fog in here from bringing it in as usual it ran amazing but this engine is going to be coming out and this engine is going to be going in so we got to get all the front tin work off of both tractors, hood, uh, both side panels. This one's already missing a side panel. And the uprights, of course the grills. Then unbolt the engine, unbolt the drive shaft, and unplug. Uh, take the four bolts, there should be four bolts in the bottom. Take them out, and we should be ready to switch. All right, guys, today is the fourth day of 2023, January 4th. Uh, today is Wednesday. The general consensus on this video seems to be that most people just want a normal video, but uh, some people, about a quarter of the people, want an instructional video. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to film this to be both. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is pull all the tin work off of both of them. And I'll probably put that in the time lapse for everybody. Um, all it is, is I'll explain it real quick here first. Uh, the side panel each has a bolt here, a bolt here, and a bolt here. You take those three bolts out, and the side panel comes off. So I'll do that on both sides. And then I will unbolt the hood mount. Let me show you on this tractor since it's already got that off. It would be this bolt here and this bolt here on each side and the uprights also come off with the hood and of course you just pop the grill out first and the grill should just pull out ah, there we go and uh, that's all apart so I am going to get both of these apart all the tin off of them and then I will bring you guys back um, you're gonna see it in a time lapse but uh, then I'll bring you back and show you how to do whatever I do next and we'll get to it
guys, so in my explanation there, I forgot to show you. I completely forgot about this. This has four bolts here, 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 and here that you have to take off. Then you pull the plugs out of your hydraulics, and this will just slide off. So I'm going to finish taking this off. I'll bring you back. All right, so I just checked the parts books, and... Uh, it looks like the easiest way to take the engine out is to unbolt from or the unbolt the carriage from the frame of the tractor. You can also get in here and unbolt the engine from the uh, engine cradle, but uh, this looks easier on the parts books. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. And there is. A bolt here that goes all the way through, bolt here that goes all the way through, that bolt right there, there's one on each side like that. So uh, this first one I'm going to take out in just a time lapse. The next one in that tractor there, I will show you guys how to do it because I haven't done it before. And so before I go trying to show people how to do it, I want to figure out the best way to do it myself. So I'm going to put you guys in a time lapse and get this motor unbolted and we will uh, get to the other one. All right, guys, what I ended up having to do on the back, uh, not film it, you guys couldn't see it anyway. I had to run two extensions down in with a deep well socket. And then I had to put the impact on the bottom for this one, this one was tight as shit. This one came out all right. But now all four bolts are loose and or out. So I'll have to pull the battery tray out now and unhook the drive shaft from the motor. Uh, then I can unplug any electrical stuff that is hooked up to the engine. And this engine should, in theory, come out. Uh, I believe it should pick up. I'll probably have to take the firewall off as well. That, unless I can get my fingers down in and get the bolts out. But uh, let's see what we can do as far as getting... I'm just probably going to take that off. It bolts on with the battery tray. So, yeah, I'll just take this off, firewall, and pull the battery box out. Unhook the drive shaft. And unplug all the electrical. And we should be good to take the engine out. So, I'm going to put you guys back in a time lapse. I'm going to complete everything on this engine. And then we will work on the other one. This is the parts tractor. So I will bring you back to untime lapse. When we start working on the tractor, we're putting this engine in. Alright, so four bolts, took both those out here on each side. Uh, I took the choke and throttle off. I unplugged this. I should have to unplug the front PTO up here. If I can find the plug for it. I'm sure I'll find it when I start lifting the engine. Looks like it's down in there. Now, it looks like there's no hub on here. I either have to take that cover off or maybe that just pulls out. So now I gotta go back to the books and see exactly how the drive shaft comes out. Otherwise, <clears throat> man, it's heavy, but uh, it's unbolted. So I am going to go and check into that. Not sure what time it is. I don't know if I'll come back out today or not. But uh, I'm definitely going to have to check on how that comes apart, and I'll bring you back. All right, guys. I have figured out, after some research, that this U-joint shaft should just slide off of here. 
and I'm betting it'll need persuasion. But that means it's time to put a chain on the engine and try and pick it up out. So let's see if it needs a lot of persuasion or just a little. Alrighty guys, we are hooked up to the provided lifting spots. I only have one leg down to this. I'm gonna see if it'll pick it up like that. Um, wasn't a big fan of it. I'm gonna grab the air hammer. How you take the engine out uh, your hydraulics are right here in the front this bolt right here you'll need a 9 16 wrench and 9 16 socket and a ratchet unless you prefer two wrenches the ratchet I was putting on top and then there's a nut on the bottom and evidently these ones are good and tight got on the bottom a nut a big flat washer and on the top it's supposed to only be one flat washer but this one has a bunch and then of course the bolt of course same thing on the other side Go right here uh, these bolts also hold on your PTO guard PTO guard comes out of the way. Now the back bolts are a little bit more tricky. I'm not sure how I'm going to show you guys those, but uh, let me let me try here. Okay, not sure if you guys will be able to see it from right here. Doesn't look like it. Not sure if you can really see it here either, though. So, let's see here. Okay. It's that right there. Don't think you guys are going to be able to see it on camera. There's not really a good way. Unless I can show you the one on the other side. Right there. And that's the same ordeal as the front bolts. It goes all the way through. It's down in here. What I used is a ratchet with about 18 inches of extensions. I went down in. And just kind of moved around until I found it. Found it. And then I took an impact 
this is 9 16 so socket you'll require as well and then I went up underneath and buzzed the nut off so I'm gonna stuff you in the stand and uh, let's see if we can accomplish something here oh you gotta be kidding me this tractor still has the screen underneath so you can't even get to that so I gotta see what that entails taking off probably have to pull the deck let me check hey guys so here's where we're at I got two bolts out of the back here requiring a 3 8 wrench and now this is coming down I cannot find any other bolts in it. But I mean, you see how filthy it is. So, I'm going to check in the parts book again and see what I'm missing here. I assumed it would probably just pull right out after that, but it doesn't want to move. So, not real sure what the deal is. still seems solid like it's bolted so I got to figure out what the deal is and then I'll be be right back all right after much 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 air hammering and banging and pounding and fighting it's the next day the engine is finally out it's like three or four in the afternoon I finally have this thing out man it was stuck on there hard so uh, she's out, everything's unhooked. Except the grass. Now we gotta pull the, we gotta set this motor somewhere. I don't even know where. We gotta pull the other motor out of this tractor and set that other one in here. But first, I need to either replace or rebuild the starter on that engine. Um, I did get this screen out of here. I already clean, I already dumped a boatload of dirt off it. I need to clean that screen. Ended up being four screws, two here in the front, and then there's two in the back. Well, technically this ends the front, this ends the back. All that was inside of there so now I can get to the two bolts unbolt this motor and we can pick it up out exactly where the bolt is for right here now I just got to get to it and get it out ah. all right I showed you grabbing this bolt out I also grabbed that one out didn't put that on camera because uh, not a lot of space over there to work and uh, you can't really see nothing anyway. So now this motor is good to start picking up. I do need to unhook the fuel line, but other than that, we're good. So let's get to it.
heck's going on around here? equivalent I'm just going to set it on here for now. I'm not even as good as I'm going to later. Just so this thing's not holding it up. As you see, there is a lot of dirt and gunk and oil in here that's going to have to be cleaned out so that we can get proper airflow for the air-cooled engine. So, I am going to get to scraping all this shit out with a putty knife and try and get it cleaned up real nice. And we will work on getting the engine in. Alright guys, it's the 12th. It's time to pull the heads off of this engine and finally put some new head gaskets in it. They showed up for my saved tractor. I am not associated with them for anyone who's wondering. Uh, by the way, we did just hit a thousand subscribers the other day. Thanks guys for that. I am going to get the heads off now. And today's going to be the warmest day in the forecast. It's like 45 degrees and it's raining. Uh, it's supposed to snow tomorrow, so we're going to get this done real quick. Even though it's not the ideal time to do it. And uh, we're going to get it taken care of. So, I'm going to stick you guys in the stand. And let's get to it. Okay. It was definitely getting going on some leaking. It's not too badly dirty. Uh, you can see right here where it was letting a little liquid past. And uh, we definitely have some gassy smelling stuff in the cylinder here. So maybe the carburetor float is sticking open and it's just leaking all the stuff in here. Who knows, probably. Both valves are closed though it appears. Let's, let's crank it backwards. That would be the intake valve. Let's see. I don't see anything leaking in or anything to that nature. Looks decent. Really gassy smelling. Not really not really thick enough to be oil so definitely clean everything up I didn't even look is there any hash marks still in here no not really up at the top there is a little but uh, like I say not a lot so I will be getting this all cleaned up I just take the drill and the wire wheel to this whole surface. Guys, I just wire wheeled it all, cleaned it all up. Cleaned up pretty nice. Uh, we seem to have 2M on here. Not sure what the, that stands for. It was under all the dirt. Um, 
Intake valve's a little pitted. Exhaust valve is pretty decent. Could get some more of that crap off it. Everything's fairly smooth. See something going on right here. Looks like somebody stamped something. Other than that, I don't see any markings on the piston indicating that it is bored or anything like that. I'm not sure what this means. Maybe that indicates that it has a new piston in it. I'm not sure. But uh, this is what we got. I did wipe a lot of liquid out of the bore. And as you see, it just keeps coming. Wipe it out. Bring it back forward. And now it's going to make a fibber out of me. What do we got here? Everything is decent. I mean, the bore is fairly smooth. You can see it's definitely seen some better days. But you guys, you guys saw it run just the same as I did. So I think we're good. I am going to clean up the head because I have not done that yet and uh, we'll get this put back together so I'll bring you back in a minute. If anybody knows what what must be 2M or something like that on here means please let me know. I uh, haven't done a lot with these twin cylinder coolers so I'm not sure. All right. Can't really get the wire wheel into these corners but that's all right. It'll all fill back up anyway. Everything's all clean. I'm going to grab a head gasket out. Check which way it goes. Spray it and put it back together. All right, everybody. Okay, so I put this on, I tightened it with the torque wrench, keep everybody happy. And uh, it's only supposed to be to like 16 and a half foot pounds. That's, that doesn't work. So I went to my own and we'll see how it works. I went to between 30 and 35, which is right about what I do on the K-series coolers and they're supposed to have the same torque spec so um, we'll see how it does as you notice the head gasket was leaking before when it was factory torque spec and uh, so yeah I don't pay attention to those because they're not correct so we gotta get to the other side and do it and then both head gaskets will be done All right, I pulled this head off and we got blown spots here too. Down here, everything's pretty much wet except the top. And again, we got a dang pool in here that I'll have to wipe out. But uh, I'd like to put in here for those of you who are going to be bitching that I went way tighter than it's supposed to. For shits and giggles, I checked this one and it was to the 16 and a half, 17 foot pounds that it's supposed to be on both sides. Both sides were blowing out. So, uh, Kohler did not have a tight enough torque spec in my opinion. If you get it a little tighter, it will not blow out as easily. Now obviously you can't go crazy, but I, uh, I don't mess with their specs. So, let's clean this one up too and uh, get things going back together. So, uh, I showed you on the other cylinder, had the same hole. I'm wondering now if that's just uh, showing you the piston faces this way in the bore because I don't see the notch in this one like the single cylinders have. Also, I showed you where they stamped something. Well, over here they stamped it not in the hole 
so it says one so I'm not sure what that means maybe it's been uh, rebuilt once or who knows uh, it's not punched out this piston still is standard unless they did something different with the KT 17s that I don't know about but everything's in decent shape again got pitting on the intake exhausts in decent shape so uh, yeah let's finish cleaning things up and get it back together all right this is cleaned up now again can't get into a few spots in there that's all right well we're getting a lot better getting the gas or whatever is in the cylinder out I'm gonna get the head gasket get it painted so to speak and get it installed That's an unfortunate series of events. Eight five. Eight five. Eight five. Eight five. Eight Must have been the weak one when we took it out. Thirty-five. Okay. 25. 35. 35. 35. Okay, we're all at 35 except for the one that broke off at 20 pounds. So uh, obviously it was a bad bolt anyway. <laughs> 